right? Free speech is being banned. Uh, they're announcing our children don't belong to us. Every form of evil is now out in the open. We know they're selling babies, killing them, keeping them alive and harvesting them. We now know everything the patriots warned us of is true. So we've now reached that paradox moment where the enemies emerge, which means they're going into full, full takeover mode, is what I believe. I want to get the time frame to you, where, what you think the battle space is, how well are people that love life doing, or just people that don't want to kill everybody, how well are the forces of non-insanity doing, and have we not reached one of the most epic moments in history as all the forces are lining up, all the stars are aligning politically, and everyone can just feel that, that deep breath before the armies collide into each other. Uh, is that an accurate assessment, James Wesley Rawls? Yeah, I think you're right, Alex. Um, things are definitely coming to a head. Uh, the, the folks who are pushing the New World Order have definitely taken the gloves off, and they've, they've also kind of let their guard down. It, they've, they've let their full agenda be seen by so many people in so many different ways that is now abundantly clear exactly what they have planned. And they are no longer being secretive and conspiratorial about it. A lot of what they're doing is now out in the open. And they're, again, not pulling any punches. They're, they are pushing as hard and as fast as they can to institute one world government in our lifetimes. And I think that the, the patriot movement, the uh, libertarian movements, uh, and just the, the freedom movement in general has caught on. People are waking up. People are getting actively involved politically. People are getting involved out on the street with their cell phones, with their smartphones, uh, taking video of some of the tyranny that's coming down around us. And people are getting actively involved. Uh, a good part of that um, ties into family preparedness. There, a lot of people are stocking up and teaming up and training up because they can see what's what's coming in the very near future. The enemy loves to say all day, "Where's the tyranny? Where's the world government? Where's the bans on speech? Where are they coming for the guns?" Even as it was happening, they would sit there and deny it. But now they're just doing it out in the open, but still denying they're doing it, and it's discrediting them. What is the modus operandi there? Well, I think their level of fear of, of retribution, whether it be political or otherwise, has dropped a bit. They're just feeling very brazen, very self-confident that they can get away with this. They've seen that they've pushed and pushed and pushed and the American people really haven't pushed back. And because of that, they've become brazen. And along with that brazenness comes a puffed up self-confidence that I think will be part of their downfall. Well, I've been asking some of the questions here, and I've got more, but get into what you see as front and center right now. Obviously, they're imploding the borders, a big plank of globalism in our face. Definitely. Yes. Um, the, the whole globalist agenda is, is getting played out uh, in prime time right now. The, the dissolution of America's borders with NAFTA, with GATT, with the uh, international trucking agreement and so on uh, are, are blatant. The, you know, the conservative or so-called conservative politicians, even coming from the Tea Party side, have caved in and are, are now saying, oh, we can't erect a border fence. It will be prohibitively ex expensive, impractical, or whatever. The, our, our nation's borders are, are incredibly porous. We're, in the very near future, going to find out just how porous they are when a weapon of mass destruction comes across our border and is used domestically. And we're at, at, a, at a juncture now where the very sovereignty of the nation itself is at stake. I'm not just talking about a demogra demographic shift here. I'm talking about the very sovereignty of our nation is in peril. 
if things were that bad. And they're crowing from the rooftops. L.A., now the capital of Latin America, officially from the city. They are openly having George Soros and the White House fund kill the cop movements. Uh, what's the strategy there? We notice Europe's imploding its borders. We're imploding the borders. It's all the same tactics. The globalists are moving on every front. Is this just the beginning of the major offensive? Or is this a vanguard? Or do you expect it to ratchet up even more? I think it could ratchet up more. I'm not sure what their exact time frame or, or, or timetable is, but they they certainly could, uh, through uh, manipulation, uh, orchestrate a, a a lot more attacks on police officers and highway patrolmen, for example, without too much difficulty. Uh, we have a a society, really, when you come right down to it, that is based on a government that trusts the people. And we've built our, our infrastructure accordingly. It's not like European nations where the, the whole underlying precept is that the government doesn't trust the people. Our nation was built on the precept that that we, our own government is of and by and for the people and that the people were to be trusted. And because of that, we built such a free and open society that it's created, unfortunately, some vulnerabilities, which I think will be exploited. And those vulnerabilities will be used as an excuse for greater and greater control. So, for example, for many, many years in our nation, we've enjoyed the freedom to travel. And... I think that could very well be taken away from us. It's, a lot of it's already gone. Uh, if you look at things like the uh, Border Patrol checkpoints, for example, and even agricultural checkpoints, uh, we no longer have full freedom to travel. But could you imagine a society where you essentially have to file a flight plan just to, to take a cross-country road trip? Uh, we very well could be in that situation soon. Or we could be in a situation where it's not up to us at all, but our own cars will be spying on us and reporting our movements to Big Brother with transponders that uh, were uh, put into the cars for the purposes of collecting tolls on individual toll roads or bridges. But now those transponders would be used to track our every movement. Which we now learn they've been doing for 20 years since day one premeditatedly, and you can see the White House and Soros funding this kill the cop movement that's expanding all over the country in an attempt to destabilize the country and bring in a police state. I have seen that wake up a lot of police and military, but it, it's a paradox. They're awake, but they still follow orders. The citizens are awake. We still put up with it. Meanwhile, leftists are out killing police, so they're so fired up. Once we demonstrate, they'll attack us. I wish there was some sophistication out there that everyone not be played like fiddles. Right. Well, right now we have a lot of people being played like puppets, indeed, uh, where um, radicals are, are being pushed toward uh, killing police officers, for example, where, you know, th there wasn't even talk of that for about a 25 period in this country. You have to go all the way back to the late 1960s or early 70s with the Black Panther movement to see, you know, they, at, at the time they referred to it as the Kill the Pigs movement. That kind of went quiet for a long, long time in this nation. And seeing that reemerge is very troubling because that could be used as a pretext for a huge number of draconian controls on, on public meetings on the freedom of, of assembly, freedom of travel, uh, you name it. Uh, the, if, if, the, if this situation gets out of control and large numbers of police officers start being killed by radicals, that could, again, be used as a pretext for just out-and-out -out tyranny in this nation. I agree. And, and what's crazy, James Wesley I Rawls. think a lot of people would go along with it. Exactly, is that they're nakedly doing it. I use that word naked a lot. They're so out in the open. They're so obviously evil. And then you add to it, don't use the name boy or girl, he or she in school. It's hateful. 
uh, body parts selling of babies, open world government. I mean, this is crazy how evil these people are. From your research, we want to break in a minute and a half, but from your research, who runs the New World Order? Who are the different power blocks? And what's their end game? Boy, that's a huge question for a minute and a half, Alex. But We can come back and essence, finish it, too. Um, you know, it's one of those meet the, the new boss, same as the old boss situations. It's the same international uh, banking cartels that have existed uh, since the 19th century and earlier. Uh, we have international banking influence. We have the... Um, all, all the power structures that go along with that. We have the we have Interpol, their own policing organization that goes along with it. That's inter, that's co-opted our own police departments and our own, and our own federal law enforcement. When you come right down to it, the the same folks that are trying to enslave us are. Stay, what, stay there. Answer when we friends. come back. Give us the land on this centuries ago. Sure, sure. Stay there. Your your Skype was breaking up. Come back and tell us. Saying the same people trying to enslave us now were the people when your Skype broke up. James Losey Rawls is our guest, survivalblog.com. I'm Alex Jones. It's the 28 hour 2015 Operation Money Bomb. Ladies and gentlemen, I mentioned this last hour. The story's up on Infowars.com. They've hired a former Stasi operative to head up censorship of anyone criticizing the open borders in Germany. And they are arresting anyone and giving them 120 days in jail and or a 5,000 euro fine. Any criticism. And now they're telling women don't wear short skirts. Uh, they're telling people you need to house these folks in your homes. You have to understand, Hitler was willing to kill millions of people to get power. Stalin was willing to kill millions of people. Genghis Khan was, Julius Caesar. It's breaking eggs. And so for anybody who studied history, or anybody who studied world events, you know there's a confluence of things coming together. Most of the top historians in the world, long after Rawls and myself and others pointed it out, it's not rocket science, quite frankly, have come out and said, we have a lot of the same factors as World War I and World War II. The economic, the cultural, all of it, in the middle of it, we have West-hating, freedom-hating elites, communists mainly, run by big banks. What a paradox. Who want to make the middle class poor and break the back of Western culture. Who get on the news with a straight face and say, don't call yourself a boy or girl, you're a purple penguin. So I was asking one of the top survivalists in the world, uh, best-selling author, Mr. Rawls, give you his website up on screen, survivalblog.com. I was asking James Wesley Rawls the exacerbated question in his research, who's at the bottom of the rabbit hole here? What do the globalists want? What's their end game? I mean, I know in my own mind what their end game is, but I get why some new listeners hear this and just think it's fear porn. Well, you're going to think it's fear porn if there's a worldwide depression, which we're basically already into. You're going to think it's fear porn when they, when they give your kid a forced inoculation or you go ahead and get it, they have a seizure and never talk again. This isn't a game. So I want you to understand, for those of you that have been insulated, that have been sheltered, you have no idea. The rest of the world's already in turmoil. Mr. Rawls finishing that big question. Take as much time as you want about who runs it, where is it going. And then I want to get your prognosis on the world itself, what you see coming in the future, because you've been pretty accurate uh, in the past, and then tell us about your latest novel you're working on. It's basically done, I guess, about to be published, uh, about to be put out there on bookstore shelves that basically predicted so much of what's now happening. Well, Alex, uh, yes, to get back to what we were talking about in the last segment, I think that when you come right down to it, uh, the, the folks that are behind the New World Order are the, are the same international bankers who have been pushing for this for centuries. And while their, their tactics have changed, their strategy hasn't. And when you come right down to it, the, these are folks who have all in the world, and once you have all the money in the world, the only thing that's left is power. They want, all, they want to control all the nations of the world. And ironically, 
a lot of them don't even really care what system 